All right, great. Well, welcome everyone to our, um, our up, update, our meeting, our presentation with Greg about the digital coffee shop, the farmer's coffee shop. This is a, uh, a big step forward in the in the software uh, realm of the work. Um, we had the the data explorer last year where people could look and see um, what connected to what as far as management practices or nutrient levels. But this digital coffee shop is is a is a place where the farmers can actually see where they sit in relationship to all other farmers and interrogate um, what what works better and what has works less well and, and communicate with farmers, et cetera. So it's a it's a big step forward in the in the grand vision of the data structure around nutrient density. Um, <clears throat> a lot of work behind the scenes going into it. Uh, we have been uh, at the BFA somewhat less actively involved. Um, we were more involved involved, I think, in helping to get it started. But I believe this piece was funded to a large degree by General Mills and other Open Teams partners. But um, yeah, I think we'll just let Greg uh, take it away, and then we'll have opportunities for Q and A. Feel free to chat in the chat box uh, or or pose questions for Greg or myself in the Q and A box. So, I'll just let you take it away, Greg. Thanks. So yeah, thanks everybody for being here. Um, so I'm I'm Greg. The, we I, I think most of you probably know me. We've been involved with the BFA since the the beginning, and we do a lot of the technical work um, in the BFA. But then we also work with partners in Open Team uh and and other places and so yeah i'm going to walk through the digital uh the farmer coffee shop um both from the perspective of a farmer who's interacting with it and from the perspective of someone who's actually managing the project itself because that's it's a really important and often like ignored layer is like the people of you know the pastas of the world the nofas of the world the general mills of the world open team the bfa you know they work with a large group of farmers how do they actually manage all of the data and um, get it into the right place so they can deliver something useful back. Um, so um, we're going to talk about both of those cases. So and then um, at the end, we're going to talk about some of the partners that we have um, and the value that that may bring to this project and to others. So so I guess to start just sort of to re re emphasize the motivation here is like um, you know, there's a lot of forces in the world that are trying to push farms to do certain things, um, whether that be through markets or through regulation. And I think the intent behind a lot of those pushes is, is good. We're trying to improve the soil. We're trying to reduce toxins. We're trying to improve product quality. Um, but, but really, the, the, the issue with a lot of those things is that, um, one, people don't particularly like to be pushed, um, and especially farmers. Uh, and and two, um, a lot of those kind of frameworks and regulations ignore the fact that every farm is different and every farm has their own unique situation um, that they're managing in order to be able to implement and improve that farm over time. And so um, not that those things are bad, but we feel like there's kind of a better general way to support farmers to and producers to um, make improvements in a way that does make sense to them. And that's just simple, regular old benchmarking. It's being able to see how you compare with your peers across the things that you care about, whether that be things as simple as profitability to things that are very nuanced, like product quality and minerals in your peppers. No matter what the indicator, you should be able to see how that compares to your peers. And in a perfect world, you should see how, um, how that comparison impacts, uh, or sorry, how that comparison is driven by farm practice or location or weather or other factors, right? Because once you understand that connection, you can make different decisions. So that's really what the digital, the farm coffee shop is all about. It's all about supporting just regular old transparent digital peer-to-peer uh, um, -peer benchmarking um, so that people can make better decisions, just sort of supercharging it. And that's why it's called the farmer coffee shop because it's, it's taking that same conversation you're having at you know 7 a.m. when you're talking to your neighbor about how they planted their field versus yours, or you know in the modern era how like two people drive trucks up next to each other and talk through their windows. Uh, but the point is taking that conversation and just trying to supercharge it with data so that you can do more of it faster and you can take more um, actual action because you have more concrete data. So that's the that's the that's the basic concept. Um, and um, so 
in terms of how it actually works, I'm going to show you in just one minute, but it's really like as simple as saying the first thing as a producer I want to know is who's better than me on whatever parameter I'm interested in. Soil health, who's better than me, right? Profitability, who's better than me? Product quality, who's better than me? Um, nutrient density, who's better than me? That's step number one. Step number two is, should I care? Are they comparable to me? You know, um, okay, they're better than me, but they're in a totally different climate. It's not relevant. They have 10 times more rainfall. It's not relevant. They're an educational farm and I'm for profit and they've got 20 volunteers picking all their weeds. Not relevant to me. Like that's, that's fine. That's step number one is to understand like, is this person who's doing better than me comparable to me? And so now we know, okay, someone's better. Yes, they're comparable. And then the last question is like, why, right? They're comparable to me. They're doing better on a parameter. Why? And that's when we get into this weird situation where there's a hundred possible reasons why. And as someone designing the system, I don't know which one is going to be the one. So the best I can do is try to show you those hundred as efficiently as possible. So you can try to understand which piece is the piece that you can figure out matters, right? So that's really what the coffee shop is about. It's about that. It's like, who's better than me? Are they comparable and why? And doing that a whole bunch of times, right? As fast as you can because it's going to take 10 or 20 tries before you sign, find something or learn something that you may be like, oh, actually, hmm, maybe I should try fill in the blank, you know, this amendment or totally switch my practices because I'm seeing a couple of people doing it this way and it seems like they're doing better. It's like, oh, okay. It's not going to take one cycle. It's going to take a bunch of cycles. So our job was like, how do we help support quick visualization so that you can get to where you're actually changing practices? Um, cool. So um, that's the that's the basic idea. Um, so now let's just share a screen and we'll walk through kind of how it works. Does that seem right? Yep, it works. All right. Well, and maybe just the background context of where this data has come from. I mean, sure. Part of the issue, it's one thing to have the. <laughs> the software set up so that you can see these things, but you have to have a populated data set from a number of different growers from different areas that is all interoperable as well before you can even get to this point of being able to tease these things out, right? Totally, yeah. And, and even if you have that all set up, the, the quality of the input of data has to be good, you know? And I think that's been a problem historically because people justifiably ask like, why should I spend the extra five minutes to make what I'm putting, giving to you good, you know? Um, and, and hopefully we're getting to the point where that's worthwhile because the value of the outputs are there. But yeah, to your point, all this data came, the data we're gonna look at today came from the BFA, mostly 2020 and 2021, I believe. Um, we're in the process of cleaning it up um, so it's not perfect. Um, and the coffee shop isn't all the way done. So you'll see there's definitely points for improvement. Um, but yeah, the, the, this data came mostly from the BFA. We have data also from PASA, uh, which will include some historical data. And then we have data from General Mills programs, uh, which will include historical data too. So, uh, and then I'll, when I talk at the end, there's a bunch of additional partners who will be contributing. So the goal here is Yes, you're mostly looking at the data from your group, right? From the BFA, because they're the ones who are measuring across indicators that you want to compare to. But the reality is it's a big world of people. And, and a lot of that data, maybe not everyone's measuring antioxidants and carrots, but everyone is measuring soil carbon, right? Most people are measuring pH. Most people are collecting management data. So when you do end up sharing anonymously, of course, and in a permissioned way, of course, in a way that makes sense, but when you end up sharing a larger amount of data, there's just a huge amount of value from that. Um, and once you've built the database and you built the structure for discernment, then you've got the critical mass so that other groups can begin to plug in and have that immediately available to them. And that's I mean, really what we've been trying to accomplish here is yeah. build that foundational framework and populate it to a sufficient degree that people can see its relevant value. And then hopefully it'll begin to be utilized more and more, which seems like it's beginning to happen through Open Team with the partners and all that money from from um general Mills, yeah well i was thinking about the um 
the uh, Walmart money. I mean, aren't right. those people are going to be going around working with growers, helping them submit data, and, and there's a there's a bunch of things that's coming coming together. It seems like. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I was going to talk about that. Remind me, let's talk about that when I'm done, kind of just showing the basic process. But yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. There's definitely a lot of progress. So I, I just wanted to show, like, let's say I'm a producer. What is my experience? Um, it's pretty simple now. <laughs> it took a long time to make it simple. Uh, but now it's pretty simple. Um, you would get contacted or contact one of these programs like the BFA, like PASA, you know, like the uh, General Mills programs, like CARCD in California, whatever group that is. Um, and then you'd say, okay, I want to join. Then they're going to send you an email, which is going to link to this survey. And it's just a, it's just an enrollment survey. So it's like, hey, what's your name, uh, your information? Um, it connects to your farm. Um, basic stuff. What are your interests? And the reason we fill this out is because uh, when you look at the coffee shop, if you want to understand comparability, who's comparable to me, you may, you may only want to look at farms that are greater than a thousand acres or less than five acres. You may only want to look at farms that are for profits. You may only want to look at farms that are in your region. You can only know that stuff by having that information. So that's what this form is for. It takes like 10 minutes to fill out. So that's step one, you'll fill out this form. Step two is for each field that you want to um, put into the program, you need to submit the management information for that field. So again, you'll get an email, you'll click on the link and you'll submit the management information. So for each field, it's maybe like 10 minutes, five to, five to 15 minutes, depending on the complexity. Um, and then of course, if you're in a program where they're taking soil health measurements, that program is gonna support you in collecting those. You're either gonna collect them yourself or someone's gonna come out and collect them on your behalf. I think in PASA, most of the time they're collected on your behalf. Um, other programs are not like that. So um, in the case of the BFA, we're sending you bags and you're filling stuff into the bags and you know everybody has a different process. So step one is enrollment. Step two is for each field that's participating, you fill out the survey. And then step three is you show up at the coffee shop website. Um, you'll have a sign in. Um, so at that point you'll sign in. Of course, everyone's like working on this stuff while I'm doing my interview. Um, and off you go. So um, you get two things. You get the coffee shop. And then also through that enrollment form, you automatically get signed up for Hilo, which is also something that the BFA supported very early on and is, I think, taken off um, through Open Team and other groups. And Hilo is just a social network. So you get signed up through Hilo. Uh, it's something you can use. You can certainly go to Hilo and use it and make connections. Think of it as like Facebook groups. It's a really, it's a lot like Facebook groups. Um, you can connect to other communities. Um, you can put information about your farm there. But basically, for free, you get a farm profile uh, that has all your farm information in it that you can share with people or not if you want to. So this is kind of one thing that comes out of the process. But the big reason that we use Hilo for the coffee shop is because um, you can actually talk to people while you're looking at your data. So um, you know, a big benefit of this, and I think a big difference between this and other benchmarking services or PDFs that you might get back that show you where you sit relative to other people, is this isn't just about looking at your data. It's about looking at your data and talking to other people about what you see. Um, and so you can screenshot, um, you can screenshot this and you can post that screenshot um, right here into Hilo and say, hey, look what I found. Um, what do you guys think? Um, and you can post it to whatever groups you want. If you're part of PASA, you can post it you know, into PASA. I don't think I'm part of PASA, um, but you could post it into whatever groups you want and ask people questions about what you see. Um, so that's the function of Hilo. Yeah, do you mind just going and just telling us what this, these red and yellow yeah, dots let's go into that. Yeah, that's the- <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's sort of the meat of it. So- Before we um, talk about talking to people, like what are we, what are we looking at here? Sure. So um, what we're looking at right here is your uh, data. And I'm actually gonna add our data right now. So I've hooked myself up to a couple of farms. 
Um, and you can see all of your farms here. And if you just click on my farms, then it filters the data based on your farms. I'm gonna delete this default filter. So each of these lines is some, a planting. So this would be like someone planted wheat and each of these lines is their result. So let's look at product quality, antioxidants, right? There was a wheat planting that had an antioxidant result of 1,345. And there's another one that had a result of 495. One of mine, which is this, my farms, the orange ones, I had pretty high results, 6584, 5119, right? You can see I actually have quite above the average here. Um, and so the red, the, red, the red is the average. The red the is the average. Orange, yeah. The orange is your farms, which is right. probably not a fair characterization here because it's you got lots and lots of data points. But and then the, the light gray is where the other samples are. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, um, and then each of these has a category. So like antioxidants, polyphenols, and proteins relate to product quality. And so all of these average up into product quality. So if you just want sort of an overview of where you're sitting, you can just look at this product quality as kind of an average of product quality. Same with soil biology, right? Soil carbon and organic matter relate to soil biology. You can look at those individually, or you can just say, well, how am I doing broadly speaking on the soil biology front? Um, we're just, again, showing some examples. You could expand a lot on what's actually in these buckets and how they're structured, and we can talk about that later. Um, so that's what these indicators are. That's like the stuff you measured. Management is some kind of like a, a, we've quantified some of your management activities. So let's hover over something and see where it sits. So this is something that had high antioxidants and I can click on it and actually see the detail. Um, and by hovering over it, I can see the amount of amendments added, um, the number of seeding events and where it sits on the tillage index, that kind of stuff. So tell us, tell us how you can see that because it's not obvious to me what you're right. seeing. See when I hover over this, see when I hover over this, it turns white. There's a line on each of those that turns white on the left. See that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, the white is where that planting falls on each of these parameters. So this planting falls on the tillage index at zero, which means it was no till, right? Look, see? Yeah. It falls on the weed control index at one, which means there was a weed control event. There was one weed control event. And it falls on the amendment index at two, which means there was two amendments. And I, I should be able to see that here. So here's a, so now here's the sort of the more detailed view of this planting. And it's showing me some stuff. It's showing me the average temperature and rainfall, the hardiness zone where this planting was planted, and then the um, climate region. It's showing me the sand and clay percent of the field that this planting was in. And then it's giving me kind of a timeline of events. So I can see this planting had a weeding event March 11th where they applied Roundup at 16 ounces per acre. And then I can see that they had a seeding event where they also applied fungicide and insecticide on 318. So basically they must have had, they probably had a cover crop the year before we're not seeing. Yep. They, they killed it on 311. Yeah. Yep. And, the, yeah. And, then, and then they did the seeding with a seed treatment on 318. Um, again, this isn't my farm. This is just a random farm I threw into my bucket. Um, a high level of antioxidants or polyphenols. Right, 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 right. Yeah, exactly. Go like, that was the highest one, right? So now let's pick, let's pick two more just for shits and giggles here. See what they look like. So now these are all also on my farm, which I don't know what farm it is, but um, it's a farm. So again, I think we got a similar structure, right? Oh, this was a winter wheat here. So he's got a September 22nd, applied Roundup. Then he's got a seed treatment and seeding on September 29th. And then he's got an amendment application May 31st of nitrogen. Um, and these aren't perfect, so I apologize. We're still in the process of cleaning this stuff up. Again, we've got a glyphosate application, then a seeding in March. Then we've got a herbicide application for broadleaf post-emergent herbicide, and then we've got an amendment application on June 9th. So pretty different, actually. Um, so 
anyway, so you get a sense of that, and you can and you can see. I think the big thing across all these is that they're all no-till. Actually, the tillage index is zero. They're using weed control, but they're not using tillage. Looks to me. Well, they're using a lot of conventional products and right. no-till, and exactly. they're showing up at at the highest level of the secondary metabolites. So, right. That's a very interesting point for those who are dogmatic about these things. I think. Right. Yeah, I think uh, so. And you know, what's interesting too is it's not just. So again, now, if you follow that little white line, right, they're pretty high on proteins, polyphenols, and antioxidants across all three, certainly above average on all of them. Um, so, you know, it's not just antioxidants. Um, and that's true, actually, for a lot of mine in my bucket here. So let's do something else. Let's say, okay, so we've kind of looked at my stuff. So now let's, uh, let's investigate something. My question is, if I look and stuff. Let's just let's just do this. Let's add a filter. So a filter just allows me to make another one of these colored things across some other parameter. And I'm going to do it uh, because I have a feeling this has to do with tillage. I'm going to go say for the tillage index, only show me low tillage, no high tillage stuff. So I'm going to get rid of the, the no till. And I'm just going to do tillage that's as a higher index from between 14 and 90, which means they did at least one tillage event. Um, all right, so now we're gonna call this uh, till, tillage. So now what we can do, it's, it's messy and I apologize and we gotta figure out how to make this look nicer. But if I hover over each, they kind of get highlighted a little. So try to look at things like soil biology and soil structure when I go back and forth. So Dan, tell me what you think you see between these two. Uh, I would say it looks like the green is lower and the orange is higher. Right. On on basically everything, right? Product quality, soil biology, and soil structure, all of them. Um, it's yeah. This is I kind of picked this case because it's such an extreme case. Actually, usually things aren't this clear, but well, this is one of the things we found. Right, you know, with everything else said and done, till dis disturbing the soil seems to be very negative <laughs> when it comes to nutrient levels and food and <laughs> and soil right. soil health and all that kind of stuff. It really does seem that that the more we disturb the soil, that we can really see those those res results right in uh, things working less well. And to to the point, you know, of the highest quality on the wheat, they're still using Roundup. They're using insecticide, whatever they're using. Right at you know very small levels but the overall function of the biology seems to be so high because of how they're dealing with the soil that they're getting those high nutrient levels in the crop so is there anything else you want to filter by to see if you know because correlation isn't causation we don't really know um is there something else we can filter by some of this stuff because this particular community was all no-till they kind of bias the whole sample a little so it's hard to tell but i don't know is there anything else that you'd like to look at well, we could look, can we look at a vegetable instead of wheat? Can we look yeah, at- Yeah, sure, let's go do that. Let's just look at an entirely different crop. Let's look let's at see. let's look at oats because that is a, it should be a baby step. And in theory, right, we should see something kind of similar. So let's go to oats. Um, now in the case of oats, I didn't have any farms. So I'm gonna delete these guys. I didn't have any farms. So I'm gonna delete the my farms. And then I'm just gonna add a low tillage. And let's just look. So I'm going to do the same thing, filter by tillage, but I'm going to, I'm going to make like a special low tillage category here. Oh, no, not tillage. I'm sorry. I'm on tillage index. So I'm going to make, you know, kind of the low end. Let's do our 25 and below or whatever. Nope, wait. Yeah, low till. Now let's do the same thing. Do you see any differences or what do you see here? Um, it looks like, I would say green is higher on this one than purple, but I can't quite know. I mean, I don't know. I'm Pretty mushy, I, I think. Yeah. I mean, they don't seem dramatically different. They're basically in the same ballpark. We have a kind of an outlier here that's messing us up. We can look into this and see. Um, 
soil carbon for at 10 to 20 is higher for tillage, which kind of makes sense because if you're tilling, you're going to have, you know, you're incorporating the top 10 centimeter carbon into the lower layers. So, you're, you know, I can believe that. Probably it's opposite if we could see these up close. Um, there's, yeah. You, you don't have any farms associated here. The whole idea of this framework is to be able to say, here's my crops. Um, right. Here's people who did better than me. What do they have in common with me or not in common with me? So right. if you're just if you're just looking at this coffee shop without you being a farmer who has data in here, I think I mean one of the points is that it's it's much less relevant, right? If you're if you're curious about management practices and things like that, I think we said this before, in general or varieties, you know, how do varieties affect nutrient levels and things, then the data explorer is more appropriate. This is really specifically for people who are taking part and trying to understand where they're at and who's doing better and how they can, how they I can. I think that's, yeah, I think that's right. The data explorer was really built specifically around, you know, um, the, especially the BFA data. The difference here is that this is built off of a data structure that is standardized, whereas that was like highly customized. You know, we had to get all the data into the right buckets and stuff. Um, yeah. So yeah. Um, we've got so, it, we've but got you're it. right. Yeah, so so I guess like I mean we walked through this a little, you know, we could play with this all day, but I think you get the sense of what you can look at. You can see, you know, you can see the individual activities, where they sit, you can try to learn from that, you can compare across plantings, um, you can try to see who's high and low, and you can see where you sit relative to that. And then you can see if you see any trends, and if you see trends, you have questions, then you can post that stuff, screenshot it and post it to your groups if you're part of, you know. Um, the BFA, then we'll have a BFA group and you can post it there. If you're part of POSSE, you can post it there. You can post it both places. Um, there's a lot of like continued improvement here. Um, we're just trying to get, like I said, this car up and running so we can actually get some, you know, learn some lessons from it to continue to improve. So that's the experience. Until people can really use it, if you can't. <laughs> right. Yeah. We got it a question here from Sarah that just came in a couple minutes ago. Um, yeah. I'm I'm curious to know more about the context for use of coffee shop. People behave in a predictably predictably irrational ways. I mean, they don't always act on sound information. Um, if behavior change we want to see out of the coffee shop usage is producers changing their practices, how could we help producers make sense of this data at key moments of decision making about said practices? Yeah, that's a great question. So let me. I think that's a good segue into showing you like like. I mean, my answer to that is that's why we have farmer, that's why we have groups. That's why we have producer groups. That's why things like PASA, you know, the BFA, that's why there's agronomists who work with 40 farms. That's why, you know, that's why those groups exist to help interpret. Um, and I mean, what I would be interested in and where I feel like this goes is mostly we're actually supporting those groups to be more transparent and to build better community among their farmers, right? It's not necessarily that a farmer is going to, I mean, some farmers are going to use this and make decisions from it, but a lot of them are going to use this to initiate questions with an agronomist, right? Or within a partner and then initiate a discussion among the community about that, that may, other people may want to share. And so how then as that kind of project manager slash agronomist slash, you know, um, that person, how do they interact with this? Um, so let me show you that process. So um, it's pretty straightforward. You, we're using SurveyStack. Um, you can sign up for it, it's pretty easy. You create a group. A group is just a place where you can uh, put it, the members of your community in. Um, when you invite someone, you're just gonna invite them as a member. Um, you click on new. You put in their email. Um, I'm just putting in my own email so it works. Um, you can add them. So click add member. Um, they're going to get an email saying like, hey, someone added you to this group. If you don't want to, click here. Um, they don't have to, but presumably you're interacting with this person. So we're going to add them as a member. Now they're a member. Then this whole coffee shop structure is built on FarmOS. Um, so each person needs to have a FarmOS instance. 
And all that is, is think of it as like a, a data structure. Do think of it as just a database. Um, PharmaOS has all kinds of cool stuff. You could use it, they could use it, connects to a lot of cool things. But in the end of the day, they never have to see it. You're just using it as a database if that's all you want to do with it. Um, but in order to be able to create that data structure for each user, you go into this PharmaOS tab and you connect people. So I can connect, you can connect them if they already have a PharmaOS instance, you can connect them to an existing instance like this. And now they're connected. Or if they don't have one, you can create their instance here through SurveyStack. So you click Create Farm, you fill out their name, um, uh, and then you and then you create it. And now all of a sudden they have a PharmaOS instance. Um, and then all the information that we said we were filling out before gets pushed into this PharmaOS instance, so that they have control of it. And that's that's a central point to this: is that all of this is designed around open source software and open data. Open data doesn't mean everyone can see your stuff. It means that you have control over your stuff. And that if we want to share it, we have the capacity to share it. So these PharmaOS instances are fundamentally controlled by the farmer. If the farmer wants to take their ball and go home, take their data and go home, they can, right? Um, it's, not, it's not on our server, we're not controlling it. Um, so that's why we do it this way. So we wanna make sure everybody has control of their data. So, you um, you know you connect someone to a PharmaOS instance on their behalf, and then they submit those surveys. Um, you can send them the surveys through this call for submission. So let's say you were sending out a bunch of enrollment surveys. You would pick an enrollment survey. You would say, "Hey everybody, you know, please fill this out," and then send it to whatever members you wanted to, and off it goes. If they're the sort of people who fill things out, if they're not the sort of people who fill things out, that's fine. You can actually just fill this all out on their behalf. And um, I know that, you know, there's a lot of people, if you don't get them on the phone, it's not gonna work. So you can totally just like submit something, you get them on the phone, you fill it out on their behalf and you submit, everything works exactly the same. It's not a big deal. And that's certainly a lesson that we've learned through the, the BFA process and enrollment of farms there among many other lessons, but you have to have a way to submit things um, and fix things on behalf of farms while still giving them the control that they need. So um, I'm just gonna show this to you in case people are interested in PharmOS. Again, you don't have to use it, it's just a database, but if you are interested in it, um, this is what PharmOS looks like. It's a farm management system. Uh, you can see all of your fields, you can see your plantings and records. Um, we have an increasing number of integrations um, to things like Comet Farm and greenhouse gas calculation tools and other things. Um, you can see these are the plantings that um, a previous uh, user submitted. And you can see for each planting exactly what went along with it. So this is some kale that was planted for 121. You can see all the logs transplanting and you can see the inputs um, and the details of those inputs. So. You know, we use this in large part because if you were to try to store all this stuff in a giant spreadsheet, it's a mess. It's an absolute mess. And this is a farm kind of appropriate database that has a bunch of additional tools. So if you're interested in that, um, that's another kind of benefit. So that's the basic process, both from the farmer's perspective and from that project administrator um, slash agronomist perspective um, as it relates to the coffee shop. So I was gonna talk about like connections and who we're working with next, but is there any questions or thoughts at this point? Well, yeah, so the, I mean, the, the, the data that we saw initially with these lines is pulling from this PharmaOS structure. So that's effectively what you're looking back onto is what did this person do at this point in time? And that's, and that's, that's the place where it's being, being stored. Right, this, uh, is like, this is like your, instance that you control. This is your farm OS farm that you control. And all of these logs that you put in through that survey show up here. That's what these are. Yeah. Right. That's the connection if you want to really see it. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, um, I think mommy, the question was really about, you know, how do you inspire people to make management decisions differently in season? I think that was the, that was the effectively the question. So, um, 
Yeah, I mean, like I said, our goal is just to get this up and running. And to your point, Dan, that you know you need a, a, enough critical mass. Um, but I think actually because of the number of programs we've won, from a data perspective, we probably have critical mass on data. We have quite a bit. Yeah. So I think someone new coming in is already going to be benchmarking themselves against quite a lot of information as is, which is cool. Um, but I really think, so beyond that, my, my hope is that because we're working through groups, through existing groups, right? We're not saying like show up as a farmer and you don't know anyone. We're saying show up as a farmer as part of PASA, who you already know, who you already interact with, right? You already have yearly meetings on um, and interact here, like talk about what you're seeing. That's, that's, uh, that's the hope. Um, it's really through community. It's through discussion. That's why it's called the Farmer Coffee Shop. But I don't know, maybe that's uh, silly. Well, I mean, the concept of, of you know, hanging out and, sh and talking shop and, and saying this works for me and this didn't work for me and this is what I'm seeing and what are you seeing? That's really what we're trying to facilitate here and make it so that that common understanding can be shared, you know, globally, that it doesn't have to be limited to a certain geo bio region or, or, or whatever. So, yeah, I mean, it's the, the, the foundational pieces are in place here. I think people maybe can see the opportunity going forward. I would say one thing we haven't done a good job with is really interrogating the data to see what patterns we can um, come up with. I mean, we've talked a lot about varieties and just even just the choice of variety, you know, can have a, a major impact on, on say the nutrient levels in the crop. And, you know, that's the kind of thing that I think somebody could do and then share more broadly, like, oh, looks like, you know, Red Ace is nice, but um, you know Detroit Dark Red is generally better. Like mm -hmm. that would be good information if that was the case. Um, so I'm wondering, you know, I mean, that's, I think it's not us for us to, to present to other people, but to think about and maybe ask questions to people is what, you know. I mean, it, it seems to me as a farmer, if there were twenty or thirty like real easy insights that we could tease out of this all, and put into a, a simple you know, FAQ or something that would be that would be a helpful way of engaging this. I, I, I don't I don't see everybody using a framework like this. Um, I think the, the the design behind it is is valuable and intelligent, but but digesting it into lay speech or sort of true truisms, yeah. I think is perhaps a place we can still move forward. Um, yeah, I think that's totally fair. Um, yeah. I think there's a lot of once again you're kind of like it's like you're building a pyramid right like once you've got because a lot of this work is just like getting the data in in a standard structure that's repeatable and getting that whole yeah. process so that people can actually use it so now it's like cool you've got data doing the data analysis at the next layer is is certainly easier at this point um yeah. and even and some of the stuff you're talking about is even just like it's really just like simple filtering it's like show me the average by, you know, uh, variety of antioxidants for carrots. It's like poof, you know what I mean? Um, so that's, that's my, those are the kind of things that I wanna get once this car is up and running and we actually, it's out in the field and being used is to start making those improvements. Cause it's, yeah, it's hard for us to know what they are. So it's just really <laughs> helpful feedback. You gotta build the whole thing and put everything in there first before you can actually pull it out and say, okay, here's the answers we can see right now. Right. Um, I've been getting a lot of calls from, from people, um, recently saying, you know, I think I'm producing superior quality crops and I'd like to have some framework to see if that's true or not. And, you know, like what are, what are the things that would be relevant to people? What's the benefits? You know, it's one thing to be in here looking and managing. And then another thing is like, okay, I've done a good job. However, you got that good job done. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you take advantage of that and, and bring that to a, you know, to support your bottom line, which is foundationally what we're trying to accomplish here is make things more economically viable for right. the grower. Um, so. Well, that's, I mean, there's definitely, you know, again, because, because this data is getting collected in a standardized way. And I think through PharmOS specifically, um, there's a lot of opportunities for, um, you know, supporting, simplifying certification, you know, whether it be organic or regenerative or other certifications, if this relates to that. 
um, things like that. Because again, once you've got the data in a structured way, you know, getting it back out for some use is a lot easier. Yeah. So those are good, good, good questions. I think that kind of goes to my next point about partnerships. Um, Open Team is is certainly one of the primary partners that they work that we work with. This is like a, some some of the people Open Team works with, um, and we're definitely starting to learn through this community uh, and the BFA. But in particular, so this year you were pointing out there's a Walmart Foundation funding which supports five fellows, and they're basically like tech support people who are working directly with hubs. Hubs being like like PASA, like CARCV in California, um, the General Mills kind of communities, which is less General Mills and more kind of folks in Kansas and stuff, um, to support this data collection and then return a value back. And um, it's really important to interact with those folks and ask, hey, what's important to you? Because you just don't know until you have those conversations. Like we were talking to people in California and they're like, they're like, well, the most valuable thing is if farmers could convert this data and simplify their applications for, you know, and he rattled off like three programs I've never heard of. And he's like, well, they're super common in California and everybody applies to them and they're a pain in the ass. You know, <laughs> and it's like, oh, well, I didn't know that. Well, let's talk about that. You know what I mean? Um, you know, um, and so different people want different things and it's very location specific. And so, making that list and um, trying to knock those things off, I think is really helpful. So yeah, Open Team is supposed to onboard like 800 farms this year. It's a huge, huge number um, through those five fellows. Um, um, so, I mean, they're one community. Um, let me look at my notes here. Um, so yeah, that's like Point Blue. Um, Point Blue has this range C. If you've never seen it, it's worth looking at. Um, we can go to their website, but their rangeland monitoring framework, basically they got a bunch of smart people together and created a sort of standard framework for soil health monitoring um, that includes stuff that goes deeper than just taking the measurements, but also what's the quality of the measurement and um, 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 how can we sort of merge some of this data together so it's actually comparable. Um, so they're going to be testing that in five farms, I think, in two different states this coming year, and they're going to be using this structure. Um, so, you know, they're a good example. Cuvera Coalition is sort of a farmer-focused group. Um, so they're going to be using Range C as well. Um, General Mills, like I said already, um, they're mostly like wheat notes and things that go through the General Mills supply chain, but a lot of those folks are based in, in Kansas and the surrounding area. And they have a lot of really active communities. PASA, most people know them, Pennsylvania. PASA doesn't stand for anything anymore. It used to stand for Pennsylvania Association for Sustainable Ag, uh, but now that's just PASA. Um, they, they, they changed it? It doesn't mean they anything? They changed it. Yeah, it doesn't have, a, I was like, is an abbreviation? We were writing something and I was told that it's not an abbreviation anymore. It's just PASA. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> Maybe because they have people from outside of Pennsylvania that are involved. <laughs> They had, yeah. to, they had to stop stop identifying just by I that. think that's right Three yeah exactly <laughs> Two, yeah <clears throat> um so they're working with the Cornell Soil Health Lab they have a standard framework they've been using for years with a lot of historical data um really good managed it well they have really good um farmer support they're going out and talking to people they're having meetings they're very active um so they're going to be using this stuff as well the California Association of Resource Conservation Districts. Um, they're using it too, um, less so the coffee shop and more so the other components like Hilo. And they actually built um, a custom website. And this just, it just goes to show like, we've built these tools to connect because we want to have a functional ecosystem, but they're also built to be really flexible. And so um, they built their own WordPress site, you know, and all of this stuff, is actually pulling from the, the same data that was inputted in SurveyStack, but instead of being represented in FarmOS or in Hilo, they're representing it here on their own website. So um, these things are really flexible. They're designed to be flexible. They're all open source. Um, there's nothing hidden. So there's a lot of different ways you can use these tools. Um, 
another, I mean, we talked about the BFA, I think, already. Um, so I think people are familiar with that, that application and use. Um, another partner is USDA ARS. So we have an agreement with through um, through Open Team through Wolfsneck, which is the nonprofit that um, that the Open Team project is through, uh, has an agreement with USDA um, to create um, the they call it the producer operational. I don't remember what it's called. Pods, call it pods. Basically, farm OS, but for the USDA. And um, what it does is it supports. Um, producer data collection. So if you're working with ARS on a project and they're doing cover crop trials and you join their cover crop trials, the idea would be that you would use this system um, or a version of this system or some components of the system in order to intake that data. And, it, you know, right now they don't have any consistent data intake. It's like spreadsheets talking to people, someone writes it down, someone writes it down somewhere else. Um, there's not necessarily a comparability of data even within the USDA or within the ARS or within different people working in the ARS. So um, I think they have a really big opportunity to- I just kind of just elaborate on that point. I think it's a really important one. Yeah. I think in AA, you know, this this data framework structure from OS that is the foundation of everything we've been doing here um, is, you know, now officially being built into, as I understand it, the backbone of the ARS, which is, the Ag Research Service of the USDA. It's a pretty, you know, it, it doesn't get much more serious than that level of credential. Like these are serious scientific people looking at how to do things and saying the structure you guys have put together actually is better than anything else we've found out there. And I mean, and I think it was, was it last year or two years ago that Rothamsted got involved or maybe even three years ago, Rothamsted is the the world's it's oldest ag research station in England, and they've been doing stuff for 150 years. And um, you know, this whole concept of being able to look at multiple multiple components in relationship to each other is, for those who understand the science piece, is is where it gets really sticky. It's why we don't know what nutrient density is. It's like it's why we don't have a a definition for soil health. Um, it's why we don't know what regenerative ag is because it's it's a bunch of these pieces all connected to each other. It's not just this, it's not just that, it's all these things in context. And so um, being able to build a data framework where if you wanna look at things through that Western rational, logical, empirical framework, if, you, if, that, that's your, if that's your mode, like you need a structure if, to look at these things in relationship to each other. And um, in, I remember when I first went down to meet with people at the ARS in 20, I think it was 2016. Um, and, you know, I've told the story, but we, we met with these national program leaders, which are national program leaders. Like they're like, that's they get, getting up pretty high in the, in the, in the supply chain there. Um, and, you know, I said, I, we think there's a connection between soil health and plant health and human health. And, and they said, stop right there. Um, so do we, and it's too complicated. We'll never figure it out. So, when the Ag Culture Research Service says, we think there's a connection between soil health, plant health, animal health, human health. Like we think it's true, but, but it's too complicated. We can't figure it out. Like if the USDA says that's too hard to figure out, then, <laughs> then what are we gonna do? And, but the point was to exactly what you were saying, because there's no common data framework, because one research project has this spreadsheet and one research project has that spreadsheet, and we're looking at copper and we're looking at water and we're looking at tillage and you have different spreadsheets and you can't actually see how all these things affect each other. And so I think that's part of what we've been able to do here in the past five or six years is really get a structure established and populated and partners using it. And, you know, it's, um, you know, it's maybe st still looks a little bit difficult to interpret for, for some, but foundationally, in my mind, you know, major, major strategic um, steps forward are being accomplished because we now have this framework where you can look at these things in relationship to each other. You can engage uh, with other growers. It's all not only open source, but you have your, you know, your 
Um, your data is your data and you own it and you control it and no one else can be monetizing it. If anybody's got any problems with how Facebook or Google or NSA or whatever is doing things, you know, I mean, the, 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 the principles behind how this has all been built are that everyone's information is their information. They have autonomy over it. They can choose to share or not. If it's being monetized at some point, it's their prerogative to choose whether it can be monetized and they can be profiting from that. So um, it really is a, 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 a very significant um, accomplishment with all these different components. He's coming from a, I think a, 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 an important philosophical perspective. So I hope I conveyed that with some level of coherence because um, it may look, it may look uh, <laughs> like gibberish on the screen for you, but there's a lot going on here, which hopefully is being conveyed, but go for it, Greg. Well, I'll just, I'll add to that and say, you know, at a very, very simple level, we are now starting to tackle problems that are bigger than one person or even like one research group can handle. That's, that's really the, that's the basis of this. If, if one person could solve all these problems, then one person one at a time would have solved them. But the scope and scale of information that you have to collect to, to solve, which there's not one solution, right? It's like, it's all localized. And, you know, so in order to provide the information to even solve the problem, you have to have so many people collaborate. Really what we're doing is like almost the most, it's like the mundane, boring work of getting people to effectively collaborate so we can solve problems that require that number of people to collaborate. You know, it's, it's not that sexy, um, but it's required to solve problems that, for which you have to do that, you know? And that's, that's what it is. It's like data structures and conventions and, lists and i mean it's that it like that's the practical work of collaborating across hundreds and thousands of people so yeah. well and and i mean and the, but the larger point is we've got these well-established respected national research right. institutions who have gotten to the point where they said we can't go any further with our model and we see what you guys are doing and it makes sense and we want to use it because it helps us go further. Yeah. So I think, I mean, I just want to reemphasize that point. You know, when the USDA says, and Rothamsted, you know, which at least in the English speaking world are two of the most esteemed research institutions in agriculture. Um, you know, when they say your data structure makes sense and is better than what we've got, and we're going to be doing all of our work now going forward in your data structure. Um, that's a massive accomplishment and yeah. um, kudos to everybody who's been involved in, in getting to that point. Um, it may take a couple of years for it all to get integrated and <laughs> populated, but imagine if we could have all those researchers, the NRCS people, the ARS people, the, all, you know, all, the, all the stuff that's happening out there, if it was going into a common pool, then we could really begin to benchmark. Then we could really begin to, for farmers to say, this is working, that's not working. Apply, plant these cover crop mix here at this time of year, but not there at that time of year. Um, you know, getting to the point where that can be discerned requires this foundational component first. Yeah. Well, and I, I'll just say too, and this is like a little bit geekier, but again, it's this, it's this thing where like, sometimes the, the technical details really matter. It's even more, what they're saying is, 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 um, it's less so about an individual data structure that there's a piece there that's true. And it's more about a way of working, right? Like yeah. it's really, it really, it, it, not, there's, a, there's a path to get to why that's relevant, but really it's like, if you work in a collaborative, open way, right? Um, you're going to, that, that is intentional about collaborating with others, you know, where you're not trying to hide stuff, um, you end up with a better, product that's in every possible way and like and and no and the thing is no one collaboration is hard I have this funny slide with like like two people on a super tall bike about to fit over fall over or something like that but like collaboration is super hard and the reason people don't like to do it is because it's a pain in the butt and everyone has the things they need to get done you know they're focused on that like that's their deliverables and to be like no you should work with each other they're like ah. You know, like, I don't want, that's like a pain in the butt. But it's like, well, if no one works with each other, we can't solve these problems. So like, that's 
it's what it comes down to. And it's just a different culture and a different way of developing and different way of thinking. And, and yeah, I, I do think that that's what groups like USD and Rotham said have come to is like, we're tired of just this because it's not solving these bigger problems. So we have to. We can't, we can't figure it out. We yeah. think small health, plant health and human health are connected, but we can't figure it out. Right. Like they realize they can't in that, in that old model. And so, no, it's really, it's just, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah. All right. So, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much, I mean, I have one other group, Regen Farmers Mutual. I think they're really cool. Um, they're based out of Australia. They're like a data cooperative, farmer owned data cooperative. And um, they're also using this system. They call PharmOS the digital twin. Everybody has to come up with their own name for this stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, they've, they've already like built some integrations. Uh, Australia has its own federal carbon market. It's like I think the only one in the world, or as the first one at least. And so, using their um, a PharmOS instance with them, you can actually like create a project area in PharmOS, and then get your total estimated um, carbon credits for a given practice change using their you know using models from the federal government that then integrate. And then they're also building a bunch of systems for pulling in layers. Australia has some an amazing amazing um, map layers for just all kinds of stuff, biodiversity and rainfall. And um, I mean, just all kinds of stuff, 200 or something, and they're all publicly available. So being able to pull them in and look on your farm and see, you know, see what's going on um, in a really visual way. So they're also building that out. So a lot of really cool groups out there using, you know, different parts of this, um, in, you know, in addition to the coffee shop. So that was pretty much it. I yeah, I think we've covered most the bases. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not seeing a lot of questions here. Um, are there things anyone is whose attendance is curious about or would like to have elaborated upon more? We're going to be updating all of these with the mineral data in short order, yeah. finally. So that's very exciting. Um, People will be able to pull that out and see, and see where their where their crops uh, are if they've if they've actually uh, submitted any. Yeah, well, I feel like if I think we've covered the bases pretty well, and I'm not seeing a lot of questions from the audience, so I would say there's no need to keep keep going uh, for another half an hour. We had held the space over open for an hour and a half, but I think we've I think we've covered the covered the bases pretty well. So, cool. uh, well, great. Last chance for anybody to just put anything into the Q&A box if they're interested. No? All right. Well, uh, congratulations. Uh, thank you for all of your all of your vision and attention and um, intention <laughs> over the years on this, Greg. It's a it's a it's a massive, massive undertaking and accomplishment. And it's there's a whole team, a whole team working on it. But it's a uh, yeah, it's it's a <clears throat> I can't remember what it was, a conversation I was having a couple of days ago with someone. And, you know, you can look at the, if you look at the world and you see, and you see things that are, that you don't like how they're happening, um, you can rail against them or you can, or you can just build solutions. And so I think, um, you know, you want people to be able to work together and <laughs> make decisions based on honest understanding and, you know, in context with life. And there's no structure out there to do it, then build one. And um, so, no, it's really, uh, it's really great to be, great to be collaborating. So yeah, well, well, ditto. And I mean, BFA was so instrumental in, you know, in this stuff, especially early on, and just being willing to put time and effort into it. And then now, having this initial database, you know, come from all that data that we've collected over the last several years, um, is just really awesome. So, you know, it's been a great collaboration. So you know, just keep rolling with it, and hopefully we can yep. get there. <laughs> Step by step. All right. Good. Well, well, thank you all. Thanks. And thank you, Greg. Great. Yep. Thank you all. Bye -bye.